Hi, Elaine here. Would you like to save a ton of time when it comes to managing your image files using the free Photo Mac app? Of course you would. Keep watching to find out how. So let's see what options Photor has for batch processing that will save you all that time I promised. Well, before I get to that, you need to know that Photor has three modes. The first mode is edit mode, and that allows you to edit an individual photo. The second mode is collaging mode. That allows you to take a collection of images and create a unique collage from them. Those two features of Photor I've addressed previously in separate videos. You can get those videos from that URL there, which is elainegiles.co.uk slash Photor. But today we're looking at the third mode, which is batch mode. And that provides a whole range of options for working with your images in groups. So clicking to access batch mode. And this is the interface for the batch processing mode within Photor. It's split up into three distinct areas, so starting over on the left-hand side. The first option is the Home button. And that actually takes you back to the Mode selection, where you can choose between Edit, Collage and Batch Process. Below that, you have an area to specify which images you're working with, so the Source images. You can then specify a destination for those images, which will be where they're saved when you've processed them. And then moving down, we have four buttons that provide access to the settings, the scenes, the effects and the borders, which we will look at in detail shortly. And then in the middle, at the moment, we have access to batch resize, batch rename and batch convert. But what you actually see in the center of the photo interface is determined by which of the options or buttons you have clicked on the left hand side. So if I were to change to scenes, the middle of the interface would change to reflect that and so forth if I work through all of those options. But I'm going to leave that set to settings at the moment. That's the first area that we'll be having a look at. And then over on the right hand side, you have a preview area. It's not showing anything at the moment as we haven't specified a source folder, but it will shortly. And the other thing to be aware of on the right hand side are the options at the bottom here. When you start processing your images, this will give you a summary of what you're about to do. So this area is the summary panel. And then finally, you have the start button. At the moment, that's not active, but it will be when we've got some images. So let's actually now have a look at what we can do in Photor. So going back and specifying a source location for the images. Now I have a folder on my desktop called Wedding Images and I'm going to click on there and then just hit the Choose button. And that will load in all of the images that are contained within that folder. And there are 32 of them. So on the left hand side, we now have a source folder, which means on the right hand side, the preview is now active. At the top, it's previewing a single image. Which image that is, is determined by making a selection in the thumbnail grid underneath. So as I click through there, the large preview changes. Because there's more than 12 images, I can also page through the other images from the collection I've loaded. And again, just click to preview the specific image. And the last thing to do before I start processing these images is to specify a destination for them to be saved to. So select folder. I'm actually going to go back to the desktop and create a new folder. This one's going to be for images I've converted to a different file format. And then just select choose. So the first thing I'm going to do is to convert all of those images to a different file format. And that's the option that is active by default. So batch convert. You have four options in here. You can save them to JPEG, PNG, bitmap or TIFF. If you specify JPEG, you do get the option to set the quality, so high, normal or low. I'm actually going to convert these to PNGs. And that's all there is to it to run a batch process to convert the images. Moving down to the Go button and clicking that, you get a progress bar. How long the process will take depends on how many images you have and what format you're converting them to. The size of the image will also have a bearing on it, but as you can see, it doesn't take too long at all. Then it tells you it's finished, it gives you a summary of what it's done, and you have an option to either just OK that or show those files in the finder. So I'm going to 
select the show in finder option and that will open up that folder which we called converted in it there are 32 files and now they are all pngs it doesn't actually matter what file format those were originally as it happens they were jpegs if i open up the originals they were all jpegs but it really wouldn't matter what the original file formats were as long as photo could read them it would convert them all to pngs so that's our first batch process run for the second one, I'm going to elect to rename the output. So I'm going to create another output folder. So I do want it on the desktop, but I want a new folder called renamed. I'm working with the same set of images, but this time I'm concentrating on renaming them. There are disclosure triangles which will allow you to concentrate on the process that you're actually working with. So in this case, renaming. And there's two parts to renaming here. First of all, there is the root name. Now these are wedding images, so I'm going to put in the root name of wedding. Then the second part is to append a number. So in effect, I'll create 32 images called wedding, and then they'll have a number added to them. And what it's asking for is the starting number. So I'll just put in one there for the starting number. Now, although all I want to do with these is rename them, so I don't want to convert them to TIFFs. I don't want to convert them to PNGs. I just want to rename my originals. You still have to be aware that you need to go into the batch convert and make sure that that is set to what output format you want. Because if I left that set to PNG, I would get a collection of files that have been renamed, but they would also be converted to PNGs. And I just want them as the original JPEGs. So always check your batch convert options too. And then hit the play button. And again, it will go through and process those images, this time renaming them and ensuring that they're JPEGs. Again, it was successful, 32 successful conversions. And I'm going to show that in the finder. And you can see rather than that random collection of names, I now have neatly named files starting with wedding and then incrementing by one for each image. So one right through to 32. Now, the third option you have from the settings, I'm going to fold all these up and the third option is batch resize. And initially that is set to keep original size. If you want to make changes to the sizes of your images, check the resize option. And in here you have a couple of options. You can specify a width and height or a width or a height, or you could use a percentage. Now, which is best and why? When would you use them? If you want a range of images, maybe thumbnails, so you want very tiny images to use as thumbnails, and you only want the width of those to be 80 pixels, then the way to do that would be to go in here, specify 80 as the size, and the height will be set to proportional. That takes care of images, which are landscape and portrait as well. So I'll create a new folder for that output again on the desktop. And this time I'll call it thumbnails. Now things to bear in mind at this point, all three of these options, resize, rename and convert, interact together. I've set up the resize to make them 80 pixels wide. The rename, what is in there, will automatically apply unless I say to keep the original name. So for this example, I'm going to turn the rename off and keep the original name. You also need to, again, consider the batch convert process. So I'm going to leave that set to JPEG. So in effect, what I'm going to end up with is a duplicate set of images, but they're going to be thumbnail sized. And I hit the play button again, it will go through and you will see that populate the thumbnails folder. Again, successful and again, 32 photos. So I'm going to show that in the finder. You can see immediately that the file size is much smaller than previously. But just to prove that these are thumbnails and they are that size, I'm going to preview them. And they are all only 80 pixels wide. Now, there is an example of a portrait image and there is an example of a landscape image. So it has worked. It has done those images in proportion, but they are a maximum of 80 pixels wide. So that was changing the size, but it was changing the size to a specific width. Your other option when you're resizing is to use a percentage. So if I put a check in the use percentages box, I can then go to the width and height and specify what percentage I actually want it. 
So for example, if I wanted a collection of images that were 50%, typing 50% in either box will set both to 50% because my keep proportions is checked. If for some strange reason you don't want proportional images, take the tick out of there and specify the percentage that you want. I'm going to create another output folder. So calling that folder 50% so we know exactly what we've got in there and then rerunning the batch process. Now this time, the actual size of the image will depend on the size of the original image. So some of these are going to be quite large, others are going to be much smaller. It's going to depend on the size of the original image. So now we've seen what the settings can do, it's time to move on to the other three options. So moving on to scenes, you have 14 scenes. These are the presets used in the edit mode of Photor. So if you're familiar with that, you will have an idea what these do. Just going through a few of them, you're changing the processing applied to these images. So if I choose night or fluorescent and then change the images here, you can see they give you a very different effect. Now, what you can do with these scenes is a choose one of them to apply to all the images that you want to process. So it's just one scene that can be applied. I'm going to leave these set to auto and then I'm going to move on to the effects. So down to the effects button. The effects are grouped together. There are six groups of effects and they provide a whole range of options. So starting at the top with classic, it gives you a little bit of a preview an idea of what it is going to look like, what that image is going to look like if you were to apply that particular effect. So for instance, we have one called Whisper and that changes the image radically, bleeding out the colour and creating a sort of pale sepia effect. Again, you can preview that effect on different images. And underneath each of these effects, you have an intensity slider. So you can change the intensity of the effect. Taking this one back to the left reduces the intensity and adds some of the colour back into the image. I'll take that across and we'll have a look at some of the others. Red wash gives a very distinctive look. So again, showing that against other images and flicking between none and red wash and you can see the kind of effect that you get with it. So I'm going to leave that set to red wash there, but just to show you that there are also five other collections. You have Lomo images, and again, very, very different effects with all of these. Let's close up the Lomo and have a look at the art section. In here, you have a lot that give you textures, for example. Now, I personally think that red one was quite nice on these. So I'm going to make sure that I have red wash selected and then close up that group. The third option that you have in here is borders. So clicking on the borders. And before I actually look through the borders, I just want to draw your attention to the summary panel at the bottom. And what this is giving you, it's telling you what scene you have applied, which was auto. It's telling you what effect you have applied. And it's not only showing you the effect in terms of red wash, it's also showing you what group that effect came from. And at the moment, it's telling you that you don't have a border applied. So let's rectify that. You have four groups of borders. And in the simple one, you have a range of options from simple white to black to laced cutouts, frosted, all sorts of effects here. And as soon as you apply that, you get a preview and you can then change the image to see what that effect will look like on different images. Now, I'm going to go for something that is in the film edges option. And in here, I'm going to choose film and have a look what that looks like against the images. Now in my preview at the bottom, it's telling me I have a border applied. It's from the film edge category and it's the film border. So folding that up and I'm ready to process that. So I'm, what I'm going to create here is a now a composite of all the settings that the batch processing mode in Photor can handle. So before I process it, I need to check that I'm not just applying an automatic scene, a red wash and a film edge. I need to go back to the settings and make sure of the size. Do I want these resized? And I'm going to say no to that. I want to keep the original size. Am I going to rename them? That's a choice. I've elected there to keep the original name. And the final thing I need to check is the file format that I want. I'm going to change that. This time I'm going to go back to having a PNG. And the very last thing is to select the output folder. In this case, I'm going back to the desktop and creating a new folder and calling this one processed. 
And I am ready to go with that. So just hitting the play button and waiting for those images to be processed into that folder. This time it may take a little longer because it's doing a lot more. In addition to all the things we've already seen in terms of resizing, renaming and converting, now it's applying a scene, the automatic one. It's applying an effect and it's applying that red wash effect to all the images in that folder, all 32 images that it's processing. And finally, it's applying a border to that. And I elected to go for the film edge border. And it confirms it's successful. Uh, show in Finder, you have a range of PNGs. And just to show you what some of those images look like, there is the border and each one of those has the red wash applied to it. So let's have a quick recap. Photor provides a range of options for batch processing. Used individually or grouped together, you can create powerful processing macros. You can elect to resize to a specific size, a percentage, and determine whether it's proportional or not. You can rename your images by adding a root name and then sequential numbering to each image. You can convert the file formats of the images, and your options there are JPEG, PNG, Bitmap, and TIFF. And then you can apply a scene. There are 14 options for applying scenes. You can apply one effect and you have six groups of effects and they radically change the look of your images. And you can apply one border. You have four groups of borders and that really provides the finishing touch for your images. Photo is a great way to get just the look you want and do it very quickly. If you want new tutorials and tips and tricks on a regular basis, check out my free training at elainegiles.com slash VIP. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and I always appreciate it when you share it with your friends. If you have any requests for specific tutorials, be sure to contact me. I would love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.